St. Paul visited the city of Philippi in his second missionary journey. The first major city in Europe, St. Paul visited. And uh, St. Paul had a good relationship with the Philippians, even to the point to accept the financial help from them. He refused it to accept it from other churches. <laughs> And uh, to the Philippians, he talked about joy. Joy, to talk about joy while he was in the prison. And this to teach us how to have joy even when you face temptations, trials, persecution, hard fighting. And the St. Paul tried to collect false teachings of the Judaizers in this church. The Judaizers, those who want to force the Jewish rules on the Christians. St. Paul tried to correct it, not only in this epistle, but in other epistles also. And now we are talking about, uh, as I told you, about the exegesis and the hermeneutics. He said that exegesis, then, then, there. Hermeneutics, now, us, here. When you want to study the Bible, don't jump to the hermeneutics. Don't start with hermeneutics. Don't start to say how I apply this in my life. But to start with exegesis. To start with exegesis. Exegesis, then them there to understand it first after you understand it, how to apply it in our life now, us, here. And about the genre, maybe some of you didn't hear about what is genre? Genre, the style of writing. Is this very important? When we say this book is historical, it means that this is facts. This is what had happened. If I say this book is fiction, it means that this is from imagination. It is not the real. So genre in the Bible is very important. There is a major, uh, major genre for the whole book. And there is a genre for certain passages. So, in the epistle to Philippians, there is hymns, creed, liturgical. So if anyone asks me about Philippians, it comes into my mind of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to verse 11. Very, very essential in Christology, in theology. I said chapter what? Two. 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 Two, from five to yeah. eleven. Some of you memorize it. How our Lord Jesus emptied himself. You will, with what I said in Arabic and no, but in English, we can read it together when we come to this point. You will, with what the Philhai Afek and Sir, Akhla Nafsu, Wakhaz Akhaz and Shakla. صغيرا في شبه نفس ويزوجد في الهيئة كإنسان وضع نفسه وقفاع حتى الموت موت الصليب This passage they give it a title The title in Greek it is called Kinosis Kinosis what is the meaning of this word emptying himself In Arabic الإخلاء أخلاء نفسه emptying himself out of humility, of humbleness, out of humility and humbleness. So this they considered as creed, the creed, hell, and liturgical. It is, it is one of the finest Christological passages. What is Christological? 
the subject of studying the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the prominent church father to talk about the Christology? Saint Cyril of Alexandria. In the East and the West, they consider Saint, Pes Saint Cyril of Alexandria as the standard of studying the Christology. There is a book it is called the Christology according to Christian Cyril of Alexandria by a writer, his name is Macagan. Big book. So the Christological passages, the most important ones, if you wanted to talk about this subject, for John 1, Colossians 1, Hebrews 1, Philippians 2. John 1, Colossians 1, Hebrews 1, and Philippians 2. So Paul uses it as an example of Christ's humility. Christ's humility to imitate him, to imitate him. This epistle, it has one or four verses. Our Lord Jesus' name and the titles, is, it is repeated 51 times. Christology. So it is not just numbers, just status. To give you an idea. This is why we talked about the word joy is repeated 16 times. The name of our Lord. We love his name. This is why we repeat it. The importance of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the style Jesus. There is books talking about names and the titles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is obvious who is central. When you want to study the scripture, to start with hermeneutics or exegesis? To start with exegesis. Exegesis means them, them, them. Why I'm saying this is because I want after we finish with the Pauline the dwelling, if anyone doesn't attend the class, he will not understand what we're studying. When we focus. So it is to start with exegesis or hermeneutics? Exegesis. Exegesis, then, then, there. To, to understand the Bible when it was written. And after that, to move to now us here, how we can apply it after we understand it rightly. So we talked about the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and this title is repeated more than 50 times in this epistle. For now us here, what is this for me? What is the benefit of this for me? To have in your life to be Christ-centered. Your life rotate side to circle our, uh, around our Lord Jesus Christ. Not to be egocentric, but Christ centered. So this is the center, our Lord Jesus Christ, in our hearts, in our minds, in our theology. What it means to apply it? Everything you do, you do it for the glory of Christ. For the glory of God. St. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians, even when you eat, 
for drink for the glorified. The city of Philip God. I, I told you this is the first prominent city St. Paul to visit it in Europe. St. Paul crossed from Asia Minor, from Terwes to Europe, Macedonia. <coughs> he put his first step in a city. It is called Neapolis. Do you remember when we started the, the Book of Acts? I told you about three important references. Acts 16, 11. Acts 17, 11. Acts 23, 11. Acts 16, 11, when St. Paul set his first step in Europe, in Neapolis. If you go to Neapolis nowadays, you will find on, uh, uh, on the street circles, and this is the first time St. Paul to come here, and an icon. St. Paul crossing from Asia to Europe. 1611. 1711, this is Berea. St. Paul wanted to, to preach to the Bereans, and his preaching just mentioned one verse, 1711. And I told you the Bereans had five good characters. They were fair minded, number one. Received the word of God, number two. Search the scriptures daily, diligently. We wanted to do like them. They were fair minded. Received the word of God, searching the scriptures daily, every day, diligently. In one verse, what is the reference? 17 11. 17 11. We say it in Arabic, Hakaya Faaya. Hakaya Faaya. Acts 23 11, God appeared to St. Paul in Jerusalem and he promised him that he will bear witness to God in Rome. 16, 11, 17, 11, 23, 11. So the city of Philippi, they called it Philippi because of Philip, the father of Alexander the Great. This is part of the province of Macedonia. Philip, the second of Macedonia. It became from the Roman province of Macedonia. This is historical background. So Philippi, it is on the Ignatian way. If you went to the, this city in Greece, you will find the street. And this street very important. They call it on the Ignatian way. Is this the way of the nations going to Rome? Do you know the proverb, all roads going to Rome, go to the Torah to the Roma? Uh, this is the Ignatian way. The way of the nations. The way of the nations. And this to make you to understand how God prepared the world for his coming during his incarnation and for the apostles to preach because they had ways to travel on the Ignatian way from east to west. It is like highways connecting countries, connecting the countries. Uh, this is because of no poll taxes and no land taxes. 
cell probe and this is this because of the synthesization. Asia, Asia Minor, Sao Paulo was here in Terwes. He saw the vision, the Macedonian man asking him, cross over and help us. Cross over and help us. So he moved this is Turkey now. He moved from Asia Minor, from Terwes, and he crossed to Macedonia. So he going to Philippa. He went to Samurais with a, uh, Thessos, and he went to Neapolis here, and he went to Philippa. All this area, it is called the Macedonia. Different than the southern Achaea. And this is the Via Ignatia, the way of the nations. Highway. And they crossed in Philippi. After Philippi, St. Paul went to Amphipolis and the Thessalonians. And this is what I told you in 1711, Berea, and after that he went to Athens. So to study, to start with exegesis, not hermeneutics, and also to know the background, and the geography is important, to make you to understand, to make you joy, to have joy when you read the scriptures, to understand the more. So you can apply it, apply it in your life rightly. Is this how they imagine Philippi? Is this is via Ignatia. It is a street nowadays in Philippi. You will find here where St. Paul baptized Lydia, the business woman, and his prison in this area in Philippi, and he preached to the jailer. We said the jailer, his name is? <coughs> it is not, he is not mentioned in Acts. Stephanus, he mentioned him in First Corinthians. According to San Armonius and according to manuscripts from the 12th and the 13th centuries. Philippi. Actually, who goes to Philippi, he will find this theater. Ruins of this theater. And here next to the theater, it is not here, sorry. Here next to the theater is the Church of St. Lydia. The Gospel comes to Philippa. Second missionary journey and the vision. They said a Macedonian man, some scholars said, Probably this Macedonian man is Saint Luke himself. Macedonia, Northern Greece, <coughs> cross over and help us. So Saint Paul was directed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to direct us. St. Paul was accompanied by his helpers. So it is a teamwork. We are one body. We don't serve only by ourselves, but with others. So you will find the St. Paul going to Philippi from Asia Minor, not alone, but he accompanied by St. Timothy, St. Silas, and the Julian Desern. St. Luke and St. Paul himself. So how many people go into Philippi? 
får. Sen bor, sen låg, sen filmas i en silence. And starting from this point, we call it in the book of Acts, we passages. First person passages. This is the first time Saint Luke to accompany them. So he said, we crossed over. Before he said they, but now he said we, he accompanied them. Silas is the short name of Sylvanus, and we talk about him. The holy apostles sent Silas with St. Paul and St. Barnabas with the decrees of the Council of the Holy Apostles in Jerusalem in the book of Acts chapter 15. And it is written about Silas in Acts 15 that he was a teacher and a prophet. A teacher and a prophet. And Silvanus, St. Paul, wrote his name as a co-sender of his epistles in 1st and 2nd Thessalonica. St. Paul, when he wrote his name in the beginning of the epistle, he added the name of Silas, Silvanus, Sila, Silvanus. And the Silvanus himself, he was a secretary of St. Peter also. Who wrote the first epistle of St. Peter? Silvanus. Who else? So Silas was a leader from Jerusalem, a prophet and a teacher. Who woke up? Silas and St. Paul were both in prison at Philippi. They were praising God at midnight when the earthquake happened. He was a Roman citizen, same as St. Paul. And Paul always called him Sylvanus. First Thessalonians 1 1, second Thessalonians 1 1, and they mentioned him in second Corinthians. Timothy, we talked about him already. Timothy originally from the city of Lystra in Asia Minor. Half Jewish and half Greek. His mom is a Jewess and his father is a Greek. His mom is Eunice and his grandma is Lois. So Paul sent two epistles to him. He converted from St. Paul's first missionary journey, a Jewish and the Greek. He is a disciple of St. Paul. St. Paul circumcised him, but he didn't circumcise Titus. And we said, why St. Paul circumcised Timothy? He didn't circumcise Titus because we said, this is a diaphora. Thank you, sir. This is a diaphora. A diaphora, it means neutral. It doesn't have a sin or a vice. And this is what we understand it. Exegesis, how to apply it in our life. Don't fight. Don't make confrontation. Don't waste time and energy because of things in your life which are diaphora. A diaphora. A diaphora it is neutral. It is not a big deal. If you do it this way or the other way, it doesn't matter too much. It is a diaphora. Saint Luke. Saint Luke, the author of the Gospel of Saint Luke and the, the Book of Acts. 
said, look, the, most of the scholars, they said he is the only Gentile to write in the Bible. A Gentile and a physician. St. Paul mentioned that he was a physician. Who is the most one wrote in the New Testament? St. Paul, because of the 14 epistles. Number two, St. Luke. Because Acts and the Gospel of Luke as volumes more than others. If you take away Hebrews from the writings of St. Paul, it means that St. Luke wrote more than all of them. Even St. John wrote five books, but according to the size, St. Luke wrote more. The Gospel of St. Luke is bigger than the Gospel of St. Matthew. Even in number of chapters, St. Luke is 24, St. Matthew 28, but still the Gospel of St. Luke is bigger than the Gospel of St. Matthew. A physician, highly educated, he wrote highly Greek in language. They said it is better than Shakespeare. Very eloquent. Very eloquent. It is sent as it is certainly true that he was informed in several technical areas. Actually, some people they studied, they found that St. Luke wrote more than 300 medical terminologies, according to his time. This is why I told you, even he is the only one to write that the, our Lord Jesus Christ is sweet, drops like blood. Yeah. He is a physician. <coughs> and I told you the reference, easy to remember it. Luke chapter 22, double 22 is verse 44. Luke 22, 44, the drops of uh, the sweat of our Lord Jesus Christ comes as blood. And he is the first one to write is that St. Peter, when he cut the ear, the ear of the servant of the high priest, he cut the right ear. Because he is a physician. And St. John wrote it after him. St. John wrote it after him. He is a traveling companion. When he wrote about the journeys of St. Paul, modern scholars, they said it is wrong. It is not right. What St. Luke wrote in the Book of Acts it is not true. It is not accurate. One of them, he was a professor in Oxford. His name is William Ramsey. But he followed what St. Paul wrote. He converted into Christianity, and he wrote a book about the book of Acts, how St. Paul was, St. Luke was accurate in mentioning the countries, the cities, the islands, one by one. I told you about the wee passages or the wee sections of Acts, begin and the end at Philip one. Saint Luke may have been, in a sense, Saint Paul's personal physician.
उस से हमको है सिकनेस फिलिपाई एज अ रोमन कॉलोनी is this is you talked about as a house of Paul preached to the household of Caesar preaching preaching to the household of Caesar can you imagine this area was basilicas, cathedrals. Ottoman Empire destroyed. You find that the basilica is huge. It means that this it was filled with <coughs> Christians. The province of Macedonia. The characters, women had more social freedom, economic opportunities, this is why Libya was a business woman. Worshipping by the river, you will find the river, the place where St. Paul baptized Lydia and her household. We said that Lydia originally from? From, you can say it here. From Asia. Women who wore cars in the gospel. Several leading women mentioned as Thessalonica. The author, St. Paul wrote Philippians. This is highly personal epistle. Some Paul mentioned the pronouns I and my more than 50 times. It is quoted or alluded to by early authors like Saint Clement. Let me tell you this. I've said it before, but I wanted to remind you. We have two Saint Clement. Saint Clement of Rome, the disciple of Saint Peter, and the Saint Clement of Alexandria in the second century. Saint Clement of Rome, his name is mentioned in this epistle, Phil Philippi, four verses three, chapter four verses three, and he wrote epistle to the Corinthians the epistle of St. Clement to Corinthians, he quoted from this epistle. What is this, this it means? That this epistle is written before 95, because it is written when St. Paul was in the prison around 61 to 63. Both St. Clement and St. Ignatius, they are part of fathers, we call them apostolic fathers. I mentioned them before. The apostolic fathers, St. Clement of Rome, St. Ignatius of Antioch, St. Polycarp of Smyrna, St. Barnabas, Papias, and Hermes. Hermes is mentioned in the Epistle to Romans, chapter 16. St. Barnabas is mentioned in the book of Acts 25 times, and in the Pauline Epistles five times. And St. Ignatius, they said, maybe he is the, 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 the child whom our Lord carried, and they said, 
if you don't return like a children, you will not enter into the kingdom. But I told you also that St. John Chrysostom, he said, I don't think this is true. St. John Chrysostom commented. St. Ignatius was offered as a martyr to the lions in Rome in the Colosseum. And he wrote seven epistles, <coughs> seven letters. And on his way from Antioch in Syria to Rome, this is why every patriarch of the Syrian Orthodox, they call him Mary Ignatius, and they don't mention his name like Mary Ignatius Ephraim, the second pillar. Saint Ignatius, he wrote from this epistle, and the Saint Polycarp of Smyrna, he is the angel of the Church of Smyrna in the Book of Revelation. The only <coughs> angel in the seven churches is blameless, Saint Polycarp, and he is a martyr. The Marcionites. Marcion is a heretic. But he put it from this episode. Saint Irenaeus is the disciple of Saint Polycarp <coughs> in the second century. And Saint Clement of Alexandria, he quoted from this episode. Tertullian of Carthage, we don't call him a saint, but a scholar like origin, like a Tatian. But Tertullian, his life is divided into three stages orthodoxy, semi orthodoxy, heretic. Also, Timothy is mentioned along with St. Paul in chapter 1, verse 1. He was a co-worker, not a co-author. He didn't write the epistle. The date, it is written in the prison around 61 to 63. During the imprisonment, of St. Paul in Rome, early 60s, early 60s. There is internal evidences and external evidences and glory be to God forever. Amen. If you have any question. Yes.